Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is, as stated, Andre Verity. I work with the UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, most commonly known as OCHA. I'm here to speak to you about an idea we have, something we want to do. I'm not talking about something we haven't done. Um, but this is an idea, and I'm talking about the humanitarian contact list. A seemingly simple but perpetually difficult coordination tool to manage. First, I want to tell you a story. On the 15th of January, it was deployed to Haiti, and you can see Nigel Snowd actually made it to Haiti, unlike this conference. <laughs> um, and one of my jobs was to manage the contact list. So how do you do this? Well, first, on January 16th, I was given four different contact lists, and I was told, put them together, managed by four different people, four different entities. It was 160 contacts in total, approximately one quarter of those being the international, uh, or the UNDEC team, international responding team. So we started putting more formal processes in place. And the picture here is the reception tent that OCHA tends to put up during large emergencies. And Andrew Allspa sitting in the back today was the one running the tent at the time of this picture. So we started collecting more things on a more formal basis. So by the 18th of January, we had 550 contacts registered. Now, by the 20th of January, we started standing up more formalized databases, which is who's doing what where, where we manage these contacts, because we realized there was going to be a lot more people coming. What you see in the picture here is a health cluster meeting, where there was over 90 people at one meeting. This is under the tarmac, so military-sized planes are taking off every three minutes, inside a tent at 40 degrees. By the 26th of January, we had over 1,200 contacts, estimating that probably represented about a quarter or less of the people actually in country, and around 500 organizations. So really, what is the problem? The problem isn't capturing people. They come in, they're willing to register, they want information. The problem is we have no mandate to make them check out of the emergency. They don't have to report to us. So contact lists very quickly become out of date, difficult to manage, who am I calling? So our solution that we're suggesting is a humanitarian ID. All right, this is a check-in, check-out type solution, not Foursquare as you know it, all right? But really checking into the emergency. So we imagine that you would have some kind of humanitarian profile. We would want to connect this to other social networks. We don't want to create a whole new profile that you have to manage. We want to make this as, as integrated as possible. We don't want to cause another headache. But you're checking into the emergency, not into Starbucks. You're going to check in perhaps before you go online. You check in through your phone or some other type of mechanism. We imagine you could check in through a social network, through a relief web, or some kind of website like that. But what are we really checking into? And I see that Patrick's computer has goofed up my slides a little bit. So the first one says cluster, but you could check into an organization. You could check into a team. You could check into you know, a group of entities. But in terms of the contact list, where is it? Well, the beautiful thing is when, when most people, operators, responders, are offline, if they've checked in beforehand with their mobile, it's actually downloaded all those contacts onto their phone. And the fun thing is when people actually exit, then they check out. Perhaps we have to remind them, but they check out. And what happens? Then the contact list is updated automatically. Right? Now, where it gets interesting, I think, perhaps for this crowd, is we can also connect in virtual responders. They could also be checking in. And then we could start making interesting connections between somebody here who wants to work on a health activity and the health cluster that's responding. We can create a team in the middle, and there it is. You start making the connections with people on the ground. So the benefits of such a system, besides what I just stated, is it's going to help you connect to people. It's going to help coordination. And it's going to help make that predictable in a very difficult, chaotic situation. I've talked a lot to several people about how difficult that is to figure out who the contacts are, where they are. So it's going to help you find the people. It's going to help you find people you know and people you don't know. It's going to make those connections. It's going to, it's going to remove the degrees of separation to finding the people you want. It saves time. You're not chasing down somebody who actually left the emergency. And it obviously improves the coordination. And the more we can be connected, and the faster we can get things coordinated, the better chances that we actually have in terms of saving lives or improving those 
who are affected. So from my side, there's a, a vast range of possibilities beyond what I'm presenting here. So it'll be interesting to hear what you guys think afterwards. And on behalf of the little red guy who was representing me in Haiti, I want to thank you for your time, and I'm very happy to have a conversation with anybody over coffee or dinner or drinks. Thank you.